So in the previous learning dialogues, you have gone through different multimedia principles that help you to be able to create engaging learning content for your students. Such principles included redundancy principle, modality principle, and multimedia principle. Now in this learning dialogue, we are going to discuss about some more principles that will help you even create more con engaging content for your students as well. And, but before we proceed with this learning dialogue, let us start with the following reflection spot. So Mr. Joe is a biology teacher. He has created a 15 minutes e-learning content for his students, and he plans to use this content for his students during flipped classroom. But whenever this content is playing, there is a background noise, a background music that comes uh, or at a slow note. And Amina is one of his students who uses this content, and she says that this content is okay for her to be able to learn better. However, Kavita is another student of Mr. Joe who says that uh, this sort of background music is actually distracting her from learning better. Now, what is your opinion about Amina and Kavita? Pause the video, uh, write down your responses, and when you are done, resume. You might have given different suggestions about the e effect of the background music in Mr. Joe's class. And some of you might have said that, okay, for me, this type of music or background music is actually important because it helps me to be able to learn better in some situations. And some of you might have said that, okay, this type of content which has background music of this sort at a slow pace could be something distracting. And in, in some cases, I get distracted when I hear how I follow such lessons. And or others may, might have said in, it, 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 it differs from situations and situations depending on the type of the content that you are learning and where you want to use uh, that content itself. So now let us see what cognitive theory of multimedia learning says about the effect of background music in different contents uh, for you as students to be able to learn better. Now cognitive theory of multimedia learning uh, says that uh, all humans have two channels. One is used for all the information related to visual or pictorial representations. But again, another channel is basically used for all audio or verbal information that you process. Now, but all these channels are actually limited in terms of capacity, and therefore, the more you add information to it or the more you overload it, it becomes a hindrance to some process of learning that may happen in your head. And therefore, in some cases, uh, some background music may be distracting for some learners, where learners get it uh, difficult to be able to move forward as they use that content itself. So in most cases, active learning occurs whenever the content is engaging and it allows this cognitive process to be able to happen in your own uh, head. Therefore, and this is one of the mistakes that uh, common instruction designers or e-learning content developers make to use non-related background music in such contents, which becomes a hindrance to some of your students to be able to learn because in some situations, this may not be a good practice in general. Therefore, we can generally say that background music may not be suitable in some situations, uh, situations such as when the content is actually new to your new students or to your learners, but in some situations where probably the content is actually being spoken or being taught at a pace that the learner cannot be able to control, or at, in situations where the learner cannot be able to follow the, the speed at which the content is being displayed. So in such cases, the background music may not be actually of importance. So generally, whenever we are including uh, background music in some content, it may affect the learners to be able to learn better because of the noise that comes up and because you're actually overloading your working memory. Now, this brings us to a discussion about coherence principle. Coherence principle says that use less materials for your students to be able to learn better. So what do we mean by this statement? Is that do not include extraneous uh, words in your content, do not use extraneous graphics in your content, but do not use extraneous sounds in your content. Always make it simple, use only less materials to be able to engage your students and be able to learn better in, in such situations. And this is evident in the example we have given about the effect of background music in your own content. So the first rule of coherence principle states that whenever you are creating e-learning content, or whenever you are creating content for your students that involves a lot of uh, channels, uh, make sure that you are avoiding all these extraneous sounds that may affect uh, the human brain or may affect the human memory to be able uh, to work better. Because whenever you're adding extra information such as uh, extra background music or extra sounds, it actually overloads your working memory and therefore or it prevents you from the process of learning better for your students or from the process of learning be better whenever you're creating the content for your students. Now here is a scenario. We are talking about Mr. Joe again, the same biology teacher who teaches now, who is teaching about uh, flowers. So he's, he has created a content uh, about flowers for his students. 
And he, he wants, the main objective of this content is actually to let the students be able to understand and identify the parts of the flowers. Now, he has created the following content, as you see here, that the students need to go through and be able to learn and understand about the parts of the flower. Now, take a moment, take a few seconds, look into this image here, and then think of what is wrong with this particular image that you see on this side. So as you can see, this image is full, is full of text. You can see that it, it has a lot of text on the left side of the image. But again, you have uh, the flower being put on the right side of the image. So this amount of information or text becomes a little bit cumbersome for students to be able to follow, to be able to learn better. And this is actually what you call the second rule of the coherence principle, which states that avoid extraneous words to any e-learning content that your students need to undergo. Now, if we look into this image here, we can be able to see that all the text that has been there in the previous image have been reduced in the sense that students can now be able to learn better. And you can see that the flower itself has different parts that are shown, and each part has been labeled by a little bit of a diagram and a little bit of uh, details. And again, in this way, we can also therefore be able to reduce the amount of text that has been shown in the previous image to this new image. And this makes it easier for learners to be able to follow up the lesson much more easier. And it allows the learner to be able to pay attention to all the details of the flowers as it is shown. In this case, therefore, you allow your learners to be able to learn better. So this is an example where the principle of coherence has been applied on rule number two, which says that always avoid extraneous words into your content so that your students can be able to learn better and digest better the information that is put on that particular image. Now, let us look into another example where we speak about Mr. James, who is a physics teacher now. So Mr. James is a physics teacher who prepares a lesson about light bulbs. His main objective for his students is actually to be able to identify uh, the parts of a bulb and then be able to locate them. And then look into this picture here and take a moment, think of the picture and image, and then think of what is wrong with this particular image here. Now, if you look into the image, you do see that the image consists of two, uh, uh, two parts. One has a picture of uh, Thomas Edison, who is the inventor of the bulb, and the other part has a picture of the bulb itself with different parts. Now, if you look into the objective of this lesson, we see that the objective of this lesson was actually to allow students to be able to identify the different parts of the bulb. Now, there is an extra graphic that has been added, this picture of Thomas Edison, which was not important to be put in this particular image here. So adding such information or such details or such graphics into a lesson may hinder the process by which your students can be able to learn because it actually adds a load to your cognitive uh, capacity and therefore overloading of your memory may lead to less learning and therefore preventing the learner to be able to learn. This is actually rule number three of coherence principle which says that always avoid multimedia lessons that have extraneous graphics. So omit all graphics that is not important to be, put, to be part of your lesson so that learners can be able to grasp the information that is required at one time, allowing them to be able to follow the lesson in a much easier way of learning. So now look into the following image and see the difference. So uh, if you look into this image here, it shows therefore that we have removed the image of Thomas Edison. It, it only remains the image of a bulb and its parts. So in this case, it becomes much more easier for the learner to be able to follow because you can be able to see that it's, it's much more clearer and less information and less graphics, which makes it easier for the learner to be able to follow the lesson. So, and this enhances the ability to be able to learn better, which implies therefore that uh, cognitive load or your cognitive uh, processes are not overloaded by the information or the graphics that's put. And this is how coherence principle actually works. Now, um, these are the takeaways from this particular coherence principle. So in all cases, whenever you're creating your content, you are creating e-learning content for your students or for many applications. Remember always to be able to avoid extraneous information into that content. Do, do not in, involve uh, too much of graphics in your content. Do not involve too much of words and text into your, graphic, into your content. Do not involve too much of sounds or background music into your content because all these can be able to overload your memory, your working memory, which implies therefore that uh, learning may be affected in a process. So always remember to avoid all this information that you are putting and always remember to, uh, to, to make sure that you are not including an, any unnecessary material because the principle of coherence says that use less materials for better learning and therefore avoiding all these um, materials or content that you add enhances your learning for your students and this makes it much more easier for them to be able to understand the content easier. 
So generally, whenever we are adding these contents, extra materials, uh, we could be able to see that, first of all, it, it brings distraction to your students. They are not concentrating on the content, and therefore, they have to switch here and there looking to all the information that is put on that particular image. But again, uh, this extra information that we are putting may be disrupting in a way that your students may not be able to learn better or build appropriate connections to the previous knowledge, to, uh, to the current knowledge. And therefore, in such a way, in such cases, try to avoid uh, uh, these extraneous materials as much as possible. Then again, in some cases, these contents that we're adding as extraneous materials may also bring about the concept of what we call seduction, which is something that is priming uh, inappropriate existing knowledge by your student bringing them to be able to connect to what they're actually seeing. For instance, when you see that image of a bulb, uh, students could start thinking of other things that are not connected to this content and therefore making it much more complicated for them to be able to learn and connect to what they're actually learning in this process or in this lesson that is existing at this particular time. That's all about this lesson. In the next lesson, we're also going to discuss about uh, other principles like segmenting principle and also personalization principle.